So this was the fifth round of the FIDEHS.com Grand Swiss. Nihal Sarin was playing with the black pieces against Manuel Petrosian. He had beaten him recently, but today Petrosian was too solid. They played a kind of symmetrical line where white seemed to have a small little edge, but Nihal neutralized it very well. In fact, few of his moves after Queen A5 were very nice, like he went first rook e8, then pushed the knight away, got his queen here, took on the double pawn, but eventually developed all his pieces. And then in the rook endgame, he managed to hold it without too many difficulties. And at this point, the players agreed to a draw. Nihal Sarin is now on three and a half out of five and remains unbeaten with a plus two score. Moving on to the next game, Hari Krishna against Schweritz was really a very exciting game because Hari Krishna got a completely lost position just after 17 moves. He was already slightly worse here, but when Black managed to execute the move d5 and then bishop c5 and knight takes f3, this d pawn, uh, d pawn combined with the knight coming to e4 and bishop b4 trying to chop off this gave Schweritz a completely winning position. And it was so bad for Hari Krishna that it seemed like he should maybe resign in the game but as it turns out Hari Krishna is a very very big fighter and even in this position when things were looking so bad for him he's two points down he kept fighting he kept moving and all of a sudden Schweritz blundered with Bishop e5 and Hari Krishna found his chance Rook e1 and after Rooks got traded here the g4 pawn fell and Hari Krishna managed to hold this end game to a draw and he is now on 3 out of 5 what a save by the India number 3 Shashikiran against Fedo CF turned out to be one of the biggest upsets of the round where Shashikiran managed to beat the Russian player it was I think at this moment where Fedo CF played Queen E8 Knight D4 Bishop D4 and now he should have taken here with the Queen but he did not take this pawn and Shashikiran managed to hold on to that D5 pawn with his Bishop coming back and this is when things went downhill for Fedo CF because Shashikiran had already cemented himself in the position and now the B6 pawn is also hanging which he chopped off and with the extra pawn he went on to comfortably convert this position as you can see see here he was an exchange up and also he converted it without too many difficulties so that was a big result for Shashikiran who is now on three and a half out of five and is playing a wonderful tournament he has also moved back to top 100 he's world number 100 now with a rating of 2648 David Navara versus Gukesh was a very very exciting encounter the position was roundabout better for Navara at this point but then he played the move h4 he should have played d5 and white is better but he played the move h4 and now Gukesh took on d4 twice and after e5 took on f3 when already black had equalized the game became extremely sharp at this point when Navara took on h6 Gukesh took back and after queen e5 he took on f2 you can't take the rook because there is knight g4 check however Navara came into the attack Gukesh defended very hard but the real error happened on this move where Gukesh had to go queen d5 and if he had played this move he would have survived this game most likely because a move like bishop c4 is met with rook c6 in the game he blundered with d3 and after bishop c4 he had no way to save his knight on g8 and he resigned after a few moves this is the first loss of Gukesh in the tournament in the next game for the Indian players Ragna Nanda managed to beat Rauf Mamedov after losing his game yesterday Pragnananda came back strongly and uh, it was not very clear where Mamedov went wrong actually uh, here if you see Prag's position already is very very menacing with bishops here the knights placed well and uh, once he got the move in d4 in the position it was all over uh, Mamedov resisted very well he fought on for many moves but Pragnananda always kept things under control and in the end <laughs> 
he managed to convert it with some accurate moves like fg5 here he exchanged the pieces and when the knight came to d5 which was threatening the rook and also knight e7 check Ralph Mamedov resigned and Pragnananda moved to 3 out of 5. Raunak Sadhwani scored his first win of the tournament against Alexander Rakhmanov and Raunak won a pawn out of the opening it was kind of a sacrifice but then he clung on to it uh, you know he did not give it up and uh, slowly and steadily built up quite powerful position the black always had compensation for it i think the real error happened somewhere around this part where bishop h7 was played and now Raunak started to press with rook d4 in fact rook b2 was the real mistake if bishop c2 would have been played black was doing well but rook d4 he got his knight back and now very smooth play with rook d6 you can't take the rook because ed6 d7 d8 and the c6 pawn is hanging and rauna converted this position effortlessly Cory george playing against uh, sethu raman in this position Cory george made a very surprising decision of playing knight takes c5 this allowed Setu Raman to take on c5, queen takes c5, bishop c5, rook c5 and knight e4. And we reached a position where Setu Raman was an exchange up. Although white has compensation, it seems like black can press endlessly. But in the final position in the game, which was reached here, Setu Raman agreed to a draw at this point, which was slightly surprising. Not to say that he was winning as such. Maybe he could have tried a bit more. Arjun Erigesi scored is also his first win today he came with a very aggressive mindset against the women's world championship challenger alexandra goryachkina he castled long and he had a very good position the mistake by goryachkina took place when arjun played the move b5 she took on d5 which was not the best she could have played rook f d8 and the position is around equal she took here pawn moved to e5 knight cannot move d7 is hanging and in this way Arjun won a piece but Goryachkina's pawns were quite strong and she used a lot of tactics but Arjun won the queen and this is where things became very messy. In fact at some point Goryachkina even started to get slightly better like here if she would have played something like rook f8 she was doing quite well but she took on d5 Arjun defended very well bishop c2 and it still looked like the game would end in a draw because rook bishop versus queen with a pawn on c3 does not look enough for winning but Arjun managed to convert this into a win with his a pawn had always this threat of winning the bishop but the I think it was still possible that the game could have ended in a draw but Arjun somehow stalemated the black king and now managed to enter into the position with his king and this is where Kuryachkina resigned finally because the king is inside and it will lead to a mating attack. Surya Ganguly also scored his first win uh, in the tournament. The key mistake of his opponent occurred on this move. Black is doing pretty well if he goes queen c8 followed by knight f6 back but he took fe5 and now Surya had a lot of space. He even later played a5, brought his knight round to a4. The end was very pretty because after rook c8 Surya broke through with c6 rook takes c6 and if you take the rook there is b7 in the position and the pawn cannot be stopped with this surya ganguly scored his first win of the tournament adiban at this time at night is still fighting and he has somehow managed to play on for close to six hours now and has now a winning position against Pai Rakoto Maharo uh, in this endgame and will most likely win and convert this. Kudos to Adiban who is on half out of four but is fighting so hard and will now reach one and half out of five. Maybe a comeback in store. Moving on to women's section, we had Harika who played really well uh, against Natalia Pogonina and she built up a very good position. She was pawn up. She had to play c4 and she is much better here. She played queen c4 and after the queens got traded, uh, the game ended in a draw very soon. Vantika Agrawal against Zansaya Abdul Malik was a Grunfeld 
and it was a theoretical one and it was very nice that Vantika managed to hold her own against the experienced Dansai Abdul Malik. Here Zansaya seemed to have some pressure but she went bishop c2 and after this the players agreed to a draw. Instead of bishop c2, she could have played here bishop h6 and kept the pressure going. It's a complex position and could have gone either way. Padmini Raut against Munguntul was a game where Padmini Raut always was a pawn down but she had her defensive chances like until this point she was always there but she exchanged the bishops and after this white was pressing it was not as if it was still lost eventually Munguntul managed to you know use her central pawns and beat Padmini. This is the second consecutive loss for Padmini in this tournament. Vaishali playing against Salome Melia found this very interesting idea with Rook F3 but uh, in the end the players repeated the moves and they agreed to a draw. And now Divya she scored her first win of the tournament and when her opponent played Bishop here she used her knights commendably and she got into the position and managed to win this with some sparkling sacrifices in style and in the end her two rooks were very powerful and she won her first round maybe this is the start of Divya's comeback in this tournament so in this way today was a very very exciting round in fact we scored many many victories which is very good news it just shows that Indians are now warming up in this tournament with five rounds completed we have six more to go and all the best to the Indian Let's <laughs> go.